joining me right now. And I mispronounced her name because when I see her, she reminds me of a Uzi, the way she comes powerfully into the world. But that's not how you pronounce her name. She is the COO of Wikimedia, Wikipedia. Let me welcome Janine Uzel. Welcome. There you go. Hey, Karen. Hey, Janine. Hi. How's everyone? Good. I'm you great. know. Hey. Hey. Hey, part of the thing is I've never seen this name before. U Z L E L L U Z E L. Never seen it. And two L's. Two C. There you go. Never seen it before, so it's not familiar to me. But I'm going to learn it. What is the? Where does it come from? Well, you know, according to the test we have to take, it's a whole lot of European. So we know what that story is all about. Yes, yes, yes. A little bit of Nigerian. Okay. All right, you spend a lot of time. You're a techie. You you uh, went to North. Was it North Carolina? No, A oh. T State A-T. University Aggie Pride, Karen. I'm, 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 listen, listen, Don't HBCU, and right. you know we we met at at a conference in Florida, um, Women of Color Empowerment uh, Conference, which they do every year, and I hope they get to do it again this year because it's an amazing place to convene mm-hmm. all of this talent. And we spent uh, you know a good part of the evening talking about tech and how we can magnify that because you know we do tech tuesday here drew is usually my tech tuesday partner in power as well but it's it's important now uh that the world is different tech two percent two percent representation at your company wikipedia wikimedia where a lot of we are a lot of us are going now for our history and our information what's the representation like and how do we help you make it more of us so I want to give you a little bit of background on how Wikipedia works, because most people do not know how the sausage is made. Um, so first of all, you know, all protocol. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for having me. We've been, uh, I've been wanting to talk to you for a while, and so I appreciate it. So Wikimedia, the foundation, is the organization that leads the community, um, which most people know as Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a great example of how communities can gather and powerfully make radical change because this entire platform, which has billions of impressions a year, meaning multiple devices, billions and billions of people, either using, if you're using Google, you're getting routed to Wikipedia. If you're using Wikipedia directly, um, Wikidata, if you're using images and creative comments, you are getting access to Wikipedia. And the movement of people, hundreds of thousands of people around the world that support the work that we do. And so Wikipedia is a very powerful community tool and the impact that it has is great and also challenging. We have areas that we need to work on as well. Our representation um, is, is adherent to what we see in in corporations. You know, I came from General Electric where I spent almost 20 years. And so, I mean, you know, you like straight talk. That's the way you roll. They're small. They're they're minuscule. They're tiny. I can't see them. You know, and um, so we have a small um, group of people of color, black people, let's break that down even more, that work for the company. And we're working on how we recruit and retain and grow. And you'll see that in the statement that we made with Black Lives Matter, which I know we're going to dig into. And then even in our community, there are specific groups that write about black people, right? So you have a group called Afro Crowd, a group called, a group called Black Lunch Table. These are volunteers that are committed to writing about black museums, black artists, black history, black stories, because what we know for sure is that the 1% of the world that's currently telling the world story cannot tell everyone's story. And so while my job is to be the COO, and I'm, I'm very grateful that I get to do that job and show up in the skills that I have as an engineer to lead an organization and co-lead with our CEO, I believe that the reason I'm called to do my work here is because uh, I'm truly committed to who tells your story and ensuring that we have uh, a stronger platform that has a diversity of stories on Wikipedia. And I can tell you a little bit more about how we can do that together and how we can do that with various communities. But that kind of just gives you a quick background on the story behind the scenes and and how how Wiki works. I want to clarify. I can go in and change any, I can, can I personally add 
something to my Wikipedia page or to Drew? Can I create a, a Wikipedia page for Drew McCaskill? Drew, do you have a Wikipedia page? Let me, let me. I do not have a Wikipedia page. Oh, so let's, can we create a Drew too. McCaskill Wikipedia page? And who gets to do that? So it is not as, as um, direct as one might think. And you cannot just go in. And uh, if I had a page, someone wrote my page and they can't just kind of, people can just go in and say various things. One, there's a style of writing because Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. And so it's important that we recognize stories that are written in encyclopedia form versus um, trying to be an advert, you know, showing off a business or an activity. The other thing that makes our stories powerful and beyond what some academia or others may say, you may have heard people say, oh, don't use Wikipedia, their sources aren't accurate. Well, first of all, no one resource is completely accurate, so we should be one of many. But citations are what make Wiki so powerful. And so the number of citations that you can have tied to your Wikipedia page are what truly bolster your weight on the platform. So if you have a page and, you know, you've got, if I'm going to use you as an example, you've got your, your academia and your work that you, did, you, you do at universities and your channel and the stories that have been written about you and your work, uh, the books that you've written, the more stories that are written about you that add weight to the truth of you, I should say the more stories that are written by credible resources, newsworthy resources, which is why it's so important, not just what I'm saying and who tells your story, but what the news says about, particularly, we're going to talk about black people, about us. Because those citations are what can draw a Wikipedia page to have more power. But if, we're, if they're not writing about us, if we're not writing about each other, if we're not telling the good stories about the things that we do and who we are and linking, then there's a big gap there. I'm currently, an example is, you know, my family's from Newark. I'm writing, um, I'm writing my first Wikipedia page on Baxter Terrace, which is where my mom grew up, the Baxter Terrace um, housing projects. Because there's no page about Baxter Terrace, and I want to add that to the history of Newark. What will add weight to that story are all of the stories that have already been written by New Jersey News and otherwise about Baxter Terrace, as well as the fact that they are noted in the, the National African American um, Museum in Washington, D.C. So that makes it a strong story. Who gets to put that in? So How, how do we determine that? Right. So our community uh, is made up of volunteers of people that want to write for Wikipedia. There is um, a skill to learning to write and to be able to be a part of that community. Can you join that community? Can you receive training and learn how to do that better? Absolutely, I strongly suggest it. And some of the things that we want to do for the black community are specifically teach them how to write stories that can make it to the platform. And that goes back to the groups that I mentioned about Afro Crowd and Black Lunch Table. Um, Where do we go for that training? Uh, Again, there are people listening right now. I'm going to, when I get off, I want to talk to you about, like, how do we do a Drew McCaskill page? That'll that'll make me feel good if we can get that done. And then, like, so what's the process and the steps to go through? Because there are people who are listening who absolutely would, I mean, we have nothing but time right now. We're still in a pandemic. I don't care what y'all out there. God bless y'all. We're still, y'all got some time. Some people got time. How do we get them the, the, the knowledge and the experience to be able to, to start to tell these stories? So first and foremost, if you never want to write a Wikipedia page, you may say, I'm not a writer. Um, that's not what I want to do. There's a few things that we still want to do for our community. One, there are groups that convene that just tell stories. We want to hear the stories. We need to know the gaps that are missing. Afro crowd, I'm sorry, Black Lunch Table does that. They gather people at the virtual table and they talk about um, topics relative to black people so that we know what stories we can help other people write. And we have to determine how we do that even more in the wake of, of, of what's going on. The other thing, and I'm just making a note, I'm going to talk to you about something. The other thing are images. So Creative Commons, um, our, our images are also a big source and a need. So we may have Wikipedia pages that doesn't have a photo. Uh, My friend, um, you know, may, not my friend, but there may be a person in politics or that has a page but doesn't have an image to go with it. It, it, We need these same pictures and photos. So um, there are trainings and and tutorials to teach you how to take your image and put it on the common site and release your image to be used. We're going to show you how to do that. 
during the month of June, specifically what we what we ramped up, and in light of um, everything that is happening in this world, is how do we use our platform as a way to advance the stories of Black people? And there are a few things that are going on. There is uh, an effort called Strike for Black Lives. Um, and and um, basically what that means is on Wednesday, this Wednesday, a lot of folks in our community will spend the day editing Wikipedia to make it less racist. Anywhere you are in the world, if you're an editor already, you can be a part of that. And I know you want to know how to become an editor. I have to. I'm going to circle back to that, um, Karen. Additionally, um, for the month of June leading up into Juneteenth, we have – a series of, of groups like Afro Crowd that I've mentioned and others that are partnering within the movement and elsewhere to specifically focus on Civil Rights Wiki. So we're spending the entire month of June, and these are things that we are ramping up very quickly, all the way up to a big event on Juneteenth where we're going to be focusing on editing to continue throughout the weekend uh, online to expand and improve the knowledge on movements for civil rights on Wikipedia. Now, these are things that may have happened on smaller scales in the past, and I'm, I'm happy to be able to be an advocate that can voice and tell people, because no one's told this story about these communities, well, because there's never been anybody that looks like me, um, you know, at Wiki. So this is something that's, that's really important to the organization. And I heard your, I think it was you, Drew, you were talking about earlier, um, about cre- bringing in external people or having other people at the table to be able to have a different type of voice. And you know, like I said, that's a part of my commitment. It's not, you know, someone might say, well, that's not the job you signed up for, for, but in my opinion, it's the job that comes when you sit at the table as a black woman in tech. I mean, how could I sit here and not be a part of how we solve some of this? Um, but at the same time, Karen, like any other platform, we have bias, we have gaps, we have challenges on Wiki that we are well aware of and that we're committed to working on. One of the um, one of the issues that was really important to me before our statement came out was one that we didn't just write one of those, I'm so sorry, I see you black people statements. I was like, I don't have time for that. I want action. I'm an ops person. I need to know what we're going to do, and I need to know how we're going to measure it and how we're going to hold ourselves accountable so that we can come back and say, this is what we feel we're going to do. Well, one of the things that was really important to me, and I didn't express it to a lot of people, but to a lot of my close friends, I said, this statement from us cannot come out until the wiki page about George Floyd changes from it being a death to him being killed. And that's wordsmithing that is, that is very important to us. We know what happened, and we know that he was killed. And his page was saying, he had died. And that was so important to me to make sure that we made small cha- a small change like that, that I knew would have a major impact um, even on our statement. So we have bias. We have people who want to uh, keep us from having a Black Lives Matter movement on Wikipedia. And for as much as I can be involved in that, because our community um, has the freedom to build on its own. I lead Wikipedia, the organization. I do not lead the movement. It is its own group of people. But I tell you what, my eye is on it. You know, all four of them, because you know, I need my glasses to see. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I love what you said, Janine. Um, and my thinking on that is, you're you are a, a black woman in tech at the senior most level. And what we know is that throughout the tech industry, if, if there is um, a black person um, in the leadership circle under the tent, you know, it's kind of the way we, we talk about it, they're usually the diversity and inclusion person. And I've always felt like that if the senior most person at your organization of color is the DNI person, then your organization has a DNI problem, right? because we are engineers, we do handle ops, we do handle comms, we do handle marketing, we do handle the money. I worked for a black CFO at a Fortune 100 company, right? And so I, it has nothing to do with our capabilities. How do we start to track and identify folks who for the C-suite outside of the places where we typically see ourselves placed? 
And how do we advocate and lobby for inside organizations that are not showing that they're ready? Mm. Well, Drew, one of the things I will tell you is I have a respect for, you know, every person that works every job. So anything that you do um, to build an integrous income for yourself, I respect it. But I will say to you that if asked to be the CEO, you know, that's just not the job that I would have done. Um, It was not the job that I feel like um, would have been as impactful because, again, out of respect for all roles, you have to be at the seat where you're responsible for uh, the shaping of the project planning and the work that an organization does, and you have to be responsible for money. If you're not responsible for dollars at an organization, then you don't have the influence on who's getting hired on how a product or a business can actually function and work. And so it's really important. It was very important for me, even when I wasn't in the C-suite, that I held roles where P&Ls were were in the front so that I could say, I'm going to hire this person and I want to help us get funding for this work. Even before I was doing this at Wikipedia, I was when I worked at GE and I worked for GE Africa, the products and the work that we were building were for uh, – you know, communities of people that were definitely not receiving a quality of health care that others could receive. So it's important to me that you're in a decision-making capacity, even in tech, uh, who's designing the tech, who's building the team, who's ensuring that there's a diversity of people on those teams. In terms of your question about how do we showcase people that aren't maybe at these Fortune 100s or these larger firms, I think one, (laughs) for me, it was, When I chose to lead GE, and I had an amazing career at GE, so when I made a choice to leave the organization, I wanted to go to a place that had an an impactful mission that spoke to my goals personally, but that also needed someone to take all that knowledge and information and the strength that you build when you work for a company like GE or P&G and these other major companies. Take it there and be able to do the work that it would need to do to move the needle. So first of all, I think whenever possible, you can take an opportunity to go and work for an organization that has a very mission-driven, purposeful cause. Um, We need people like myself in the seat. Secondly, I think, honestly, people in media just need to come check for the folks that just aren't like on Yeah. The housewife shows or whatever. It's like Come on. everybody says, oh, well, I didn't know you did this. I didn't even know it worked like this. And someone said to me once, how come I don't know you? Where have you been? I'm like, I've been here, like, working. Just because, you know, I don't show up on Bravo TV or whatever doesn't mean I'm not over here doing my work. I'm not here to shoot down those shows, although if you ask me, I will give you my Africa experience with that. Maybe another Maybe another subject. Wayne. Oh, no, no, but- no. This is the beginning. This is the beginning. <laughs> You're going to be on frequently. I wanted to introduce you to this audience because, you know, I feel like in many ways, you're absolutely right. I felt the same way. You know, people always overlook. You're an engineer. Drew just m- mentioned that mechanical engineer. You know, that's right. your that your foundation. You're a tech person um, that we don't know about you is the fault of our media, our black media. Because we only lean into the entertainers. We don't highlight or we highlight the one person, Madam C.J. Walker or somebody. And we just run with that one person when we're everywhere, not in the numbers that we need to be. But maybe if we highlighted more Janine Uzels, there would be more Janine Uzels in the world. I meet with groups. I mean, of course, I'm in these different circles of groups, um, Drew, to back to your point in that, you know, we're women in tech. Um, I'm a part of a group. Um, Vanguard STEM. So these are women that are doing professors and designers and, you know, they hold patents and they're doing incredible work. I I met a sister that that built an app for how we can meet virtually better when we get through the pandemic. I was like, one, I want to showcase it too. It better be good. So, you know, we're out here and we're doing this. And I think that it's just an opportunity for us to rise up because, as much as I believe in all of the the marching in, in the movement and all, there are some of us, I mean, that that's just not what we do. But we do other things, and I believe strongly in the power of blacks and technology and what technology can do 
to fuel this movement. Year, uh, four years ago, when I, when I was still at my, my former employee, we had the same talk around black tech and its movement around some of the other experiences that we had. There are companies out there that are building products specifically to help us when we're pulled over to identify, to save our lives. There, There's things that are happening out here. And I think some of us are not as outgoing, right? I'm a bit of an extroverted engineer. Maybe most of us aren't, so that's how you don't know who we are. A lot of times we put our head down. We're trying to do the work. There's maybe not so sexy. It's not so glamorous. But we have stories to tell, and um, this is an opportunity for us to do that. Where are the opportunities? We're talking with Janine Uzel. She is the COO of Wikipedia, Wikimedia. Drew McCaskill is here. Where are the opportunities? Drew and I were talking about this is the time to put your ask on the table. Not your ass, your ask <laughs> on the table and and demand some things, not just demand some things, but like not, let it not be performative. Let it be permanent. What are some of the things that we can ask for those of us who are just working in com- companies right now? What can we go to the COO or the CEO or the CFO and ask for right now and get it? Let me say this. If you are and, and Karen, I'm going to speak from a tech technologist point of view. If you're a technologist and you're working on a product right now, if you are a black person and you are coming up with ideas and, and you know, the, the sessions that you had before something becomes larger, those initial design sessions, if you don't have yourself in that room when they are designing um, the work around what will eventually be a patent, you lose out on more than just a patent. You're like, oh, wow, I didn't get my name on the patent. You also didn't get your patent bonus, so you're losing money, okay? That's money that's coming out of our pocket when we come up with ideas. Oh, yeah, you get patent when things are patented, depending on how much money a company will make from it, then you can get a patent bonus. Wouldn't we have all liked to be in the room when someone designed the battery for for cars? I wouldn't have mind being in that room. Every Prius sold. Money, money, money. But so that's the one thing, you know, it's what room are you in? A lot of times, self included, I was in a room where I was just working, my head was down. I was just trying to get the job done. And we know what that feels like. We're first generation, many of us, college graduates in our family. We got a good job. We have to work. We need to make some money. My head was down. I was not asking the questions about what rooms can I be in? What other work can I do? Why aren't there any other diverse people on this team? Um, you know, the questions that are, I think, Drew, you said it earlier that uh, we, we just can't be afraid to ask because we work for a company. And now's the time for us to, to be bold and, and not be afraid to ask those questions. We need to be able to ask, why does it say George Floyd died when he was really killed? And why doesn't the page specify that? And why can't we push back and ask for that or, or push a, a community to say that? Um, we need to be asking for what it, what it is we're actually looking for in our HR departments and our teams. But if you have a COO in your organization, particularly if you work from a, a platform of like OKRs, so that's, um, if you're not familiar with that, those are your outcomes and your key results. So when you're planning your work for the year, um, Karen Hunter show, I'm going to do a show on technology, and then the key results would be that we're going to grow our technology platform. We're going to shine the light on more blacks in tech. Most companies operate with some sort of way that they track their deliverables. We use OKRs at, at the Wikimedia Foundation. And so one of the things that we're doing is we're like, okay, how are we going to measure what we said we were going to do in our statement? Right. My director of ops, Lydia, came to me and she was like, we need to figure out how we're going to measure this. If you work for a COO, if you have a COO in your organization, why aren't we measuring um, what we say we're going to do about diversity in our organization? How come we're not tracking it? Why aren't the diversity numbers tied to your bonus if that's a way to measure it? Because if they're tied to your bonus, I bet you'll make a number. Changes drastically. Yes. I love right. that. I love that. And we're going to we're going to tweet out the statement that Wik- Wikimedia put out uh, on the heels of the killing of George Floyd. I was looking at your Wikipedia page and it looks like somebody from England did it because they spelled organized with an S and program with an, two M's and an E at the end. So you got some Europeans doing your page, Janine Uzel. Yes, I actually found out afterwards that it was done by a community member who made it her mission to write about one woman in technology every day 
I think she's on 900 articles now, and she's not just writing about white women. She's writing a lot about black and African and other diverse women in technology. So I found out that she is the person that wrote my page, so it does have a British swing to it. Okay, well, introduce us, because I would love to, to magnify what she's doing and magnify all of the women, the 900 women that she is also magnifying. Uh, as I mentioned to you before, I want you, want you to come on more frequently, and let's talk about ways in which we can build what you're doing, get people editing, get more of us involved in telling our own stories, and uh, we have to run. But tell us the last thing that you guys are doing. I know you're working on something as well that you wanted to come on to tell us. Well, I just wanted to tell you, uh, in terms of the statement that we designed, look, there are nine key actions there. So we're going beyond words and putting ourselves out there to have um, some major uh, work to do on our platform, with our products, with our advocacy. And anyone who is interested in joining us can do that. Okay. Janine, Uzel, thank you for being here. You'll be back. Appreciate you. Eight six six eight zero. Yes. We got work to do. We got work to do. This is not going to be just a moment. We're going to make it a movement. It's going to be permanent. 